Today I'm going to show you how to set up Pi Hole on a Raspberry Pi when you have a ubiquity home internet setup. Pi? Pi. This Pi. 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 By the way, this video will show you how to set up a Pi Hole regardless of the type of router that you own. I just included a few extra steps at the end that will help ubiquity router owners configure their network for Pi Hole. Let's get to work. Here's what you'll need to get Pi Hole set up. A Raspberry Pi. I'd recommend a Pi Zero W because it's cheap and it has a Wi-Fi adapter built into it. Pi Hole has very low computing demands, so you don't need to go overboard with a high-end Pi or anything. You'll also need a power supply, a working internet connection, it can either be Wi-Fi or Ethernet hardwired, a micro SD card reader, and a compatible micro SD card that's at least 16 gigabytes in capacity. Step one, reformat your micro SD card. Insert your micro SD card into a card reader, then plug it into your computer. Now download and install a free application called SD Memory Card Formatter. This is an excellent free program that's made by the official SD Association and it's available for both Mac and Windows. It has given me the best results for micro SD card reformatting. I'll add a link to the website in the video description. When you download the program zip file, open up the application and let it install. Select the drive letter for your micro SD card and select Quick Format for the formatting options. Relabel the volume Pi Hole or whatever you want to use. Then click Format. Click Yes when it warns you that all data on this card will be erased. Once that's done, the micro SD card's contents should now be empty. Step two, install the Raspberry Pi operating system onto your newly formatted SD card. Go onto raspberrypi.org. And yes, I'll put a link below, you're welcome, and download the Raspberry Pi Imager program. Since I'm using Windows 10, I'll be downloading the one for Windows. This imager is a new way of installing the Raspberry Pi OS. Open up the imager application that you just downloaded. And when the installation is complete, run the Raspberry Pi imager. Now choose the operating system. Click Raspberry Pi OS Other, then Raspberry Pi OS Lite, the 32-bit version. Choose the micro SD card that we just reformatted, then click Write. Click Yes when you get the imager's warning about erasing all data. Then it'll take a few minutes to write Raspberry Pi OS to your micro SD card. Let's fast forward. Click Continue when you get this write successful notification. If you get an error at the stage, do the micro SD card reformat and Raspbian re-imaging all over again. It has happened to me once before and sometimes all you have to do is start fresh. But in this case, we're good to go. Close out the Raspberry Pi imager. Step 3. Safely eject and remove your micro SD card. Then reinsert it. Open up the micro SD card in Explorer and it should look like this. These are the Raspbian OS files. So far, so good. Step four, give Raspberry Pi OS your internet connection details. This right here is your root directory. Create a new text file called WPA underscore supplicant dot C-O-N-F and hit enter on your keyboard. Yes, we do want to change the file name extension. Open up this newly created file in your text editor application of choice. Add the following code. And yes, I'll put it in the video description. Replace the SSID entry with your Wi-Fi hotspots name and the PSK field with your Wi-Fi access point password. Save, then exit this text file. Step five, enable the asynchronous serial communication protocol, also known as UART. This allows us to connect a USB device like a keyboard to the Raspberry Pi for troubleshooting if we have to. To enable UART, go into your micro SD card's root directory and open the file called config.txt. Scroll to the very bottom of that text file and add the following text. Pound, enable UART, new line, enable, underscore, UART equals one. Save the config.txt file, then exit. Step six. Enable Secure Shell, also known as SSH. This will allow us to input commands into the Pi Hole wirelessly. Go back into the micro SD card's root directory and create a new text document file called SSH. No file extension needed, just SSH. Then click yes when you get this warning about changing a file name extension. So now you should have three new files in your boot folder, config.txt, SSH, and WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF. Step seven. Safely eject your micro SD card from your computer and insert it into your Raspberry Pi's micro SD card slot. Step eight, 
Start up the Raspberry Pi. Connect your power plug into your Raspberry Pi's micro USB port. Then plug it into a power source. Look for the flickering green LED. And if you can see that, that means it's working. Now wait about 10 minutes while the Raspberry Pi completes its first boot up process. Helpful tip, an external HDMI monitor can be useful here because it can show us when the boot up process is done and ready. So if you have one, plug it in. If not, wait 10 minutes and you'll just have to play the guessing game. In the meantime, proceed to step nine, install Bonjour print services for Windows. We do this so we can change our Raspberry Pi's host name, which allows us to rename our Pi hole on the network. Very helpful if you have more than one Raspberry Pi in your network. If you're a Mac user, the service comes pre-installed on your system and you can skip this step. But if you're a Windows user like me, you'll need to install Bonjour Print Services for Windows. I've included a link in the video description. So download the Bonjour executable file, open it, and let it install. Click Finish once completed. Step 10. Find your Raspberry Pi's IP address. There are two ways to get your Pi's IP address. One, go into your access point connected clients and devices section. If you're using a Ubiquiti access point like I am, just open up your Unify controller application, click this icon with the laptop and smartphone on the left hand side, and look for the Raspberry Pi and take a note of its IP address. Alternately, you can download a smartphone app called Fing, that's F-I-N-G, which allows you to view all of the devices that are connected to your Wi-Fi network. Same deal, open up the app, just look for the connected Raspberry Pi and take a note of its IP address. Step 11, SSH into the Raspberry Pi wirelessly. If you're on Windows, you should download an application called Putty. Download link will be in the video description. This is the best desktop application for SSHing into your Raspberry Pi. So download the Putty installation file, open it, click next, then finish the installation. Then open up the Putty application. In the hostname field, put in the IP address that you noted down in the previous step. Port number should be 22, connection type SSH, then click open. You'll get this PuTTY security alert. Click yes to proceed. If you're on a Mac, you don't have to download PuTTY. You can open up terminal, which should be in the utilities folder, then type in the following command, SSH space, followed by the IP number of your Pi hole device, space dash L space PI. I use Windows, so I don't have a screen recording of this step. So here's a cat. If you see this login screen, you are now connected to your Raspberry Pi wirelessly through SSH. Step 12. Log into your Raspberry Pi using the default credentials, which is name, Pi, password, Raspberry. Then hit enter. And you're in, just like a hacker. Step 13, change your Raspberry Pi's host name. We do this by running the command sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash host name. Delete Raspberry Pi, then type in Pi hole. Control X to exit, then key in the letter Y on your keyboard to save. It will ask you at the bottom to confirm the file name to overwrite. Hit enter to confirm. There, we changed our Pi's host name. Step 14, change the host name in the hosts file. To do this, run this command, sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash hosts. Use your arrow keys to move down to the last line. Then use the right arrow key to bring the cursor to the first letter in Raspberry Pi. Delete that, then change it to Pi hole. Control X to exit, Y on your keyboard for yes to save. It will ask you at the bottom to confirm the file name to overwrite. Hit enter to confirm. Step 15, reboot your Raspberry Pi. We do this by typing in the command sudo space reboot, then hit enter. You'll get this error from Putty about a closed network connection. This is normal because when we rebooted, we severed the connection. So click okay and close out your old SSH command prompt window and your Raspberry Pi unit's green LED light will turn off, it'll turn back on, and start flickering. When the light is lit solid, it has successfully rebooted, which means you can go to the next step. Step 16, SSH back in again using PuTTY. Just like before, use your Pi Hole's IP address as the host name, port 22, click open. Punch in the default login credentials again. Login name, Pi, password, Raspberry, then hit enter. Step 17, change your Raspberry Pi's default password because the default password of Raspberry is very easily guessed and really not secure. Enter the command P-A-S-S-W-D, then hit enter. Retype the current password, which is Raspberry in lowercase, then type in a new complex password and take a note of that password and store it somewhere secure. I use KeyPass for this, and if there's enough interest, I'll deep dive into this incredible password encryption software. Hit enter once you've added your new password and reconfirmed it. Step 18, install Pi Hole. 
This is very easy and can be done with this single line command. curl space dash s big S big L space https colon slash slash install dot pi dash hole dot net space vertical bar space bash. Hit enter. Now it's going to install Pi Hole for you. It should take about 20 minutes. Your Raspberry Pi's LED light will start blinking, which is normal. Sometimes Raspbian appears to be frozen, but I promise you it's not. Just wait. Select OK with your enter key when this intro screen appears. Then OK again at the free and open source window and again at the static IP address notice. Step 19. Configure your Pi Hole installation. Select Google as your upstream DNS provider. Next screen asks you to confirm that you'd like to use the Stephen Black blocking list for blocking ads. Make sure the star is in the tick box and hit enter. You only need IPv6 to be ticked if you have IPv6 and if you have it, you'll know. Most people will only have to tick the box for IPv4. Press the down arrow on your keyboard to go to the lower line, then hit your space bar to remove the star from the IPv6 tick box and hit enter. This is the static IP address confirmation screen. It all looks good. Hit enter to continue. Hit enter when you get to the screen about IP conflict. Select on for the web admin interface. This is a web-based interface that shows you the Pi-Hole's ad blocking stats and whitelisting options for your Pi-Hole. It's useful. Select on for the web server PHP modules. Select on for logging queries. Show everything for the privacy mode. Then give Raspberry Pi some more time to complete the installation. Hit enter when you see this installation complete notification. Record your randomly generated password. This is what you'll use for accessing the web-based admin user interface page. Again, I use KeePass for recording my passwords, but use whatever secure password locker you prefer and only write it down on a sticky note if you want to get hacked, then laughed at. Select OK by hitting Enter. Step 20. Visit the web-based admin user interface page. You can get there by visiting this URL. HTTP colon forward slash slash your IP number forward slash admin. Click login on the left hand side. Then type in that randomly generated password that we just got beforehand. Click login. So the web UI interface works, but as you can see, it's not actually blocking ads yet. That's because we still have to set up your DNS server in the network before the Pi Hole can start blocking ads. So this is where I'm going to start talking about ubiquity specific configuration for Pi Hole. If you don't have a ubiquity router, leave a comment below and I'll try my best to help you out. Step 21, back up your edge routers configuration. To do this, you have to log into your Edge Router admin interface. Click on the System tab on the bottom. Scroll down to the Configuration Management and Device Maintenance section. Click Download Backup Configuration File. Save that file to a safe and secure location on your computer. Step 22. Change your Ubiquiti Router's name server. Scroll back up a bit to the Name Server section. Under System Name Server, type in your Pi-Hole's IP address. Scroll down to the bottom, then click Save. Step 23, change your DNS. We're almost there, I promise. Exit the system menu, click the services tab near the top. Click the actions dropdown menu, select view details, change DNS1 to your Pi Hole's IP address, then click save. Exit the DHCP server LAN option window. Last and final step, restart your router. Do this by reopening the system tab on the bottom. Scroll down to where it says restart device and click the restart button. Your Wi-Fi connection will go down temporarily. And when you're ready to connect, you might have to disconnect and forget your Wi-Fi connection, then reconnect to it. Once your internet connection is back up and running again, log back into your web admin interface for the Pi Hole. And after a few minutes, your Pi Hole should be blocking ads across your network. That's it, you're done. A word of warning, if your Raspberry Pi ever gets unplugged or goes down for any reason, your internet will stop working across your entire network. Because right now, all of your external DNS is going through the Pi Hole. So if your Pi Hole goes down, you can't resolve DNS. There are two ways to avoid this. One is to get an uninterrupted power supply and plug your Raspberry Pi into it. So if your power ever goes out, your Pi Hole is still powered on. Or you put together a two Pi Hole device setup where one Raspberry Pi acts as your backup on your network. And that's how you set up Pi Hole on your Ubiquity router. Hope you found this useful. And if you did, please like and subscribe to my channel because we just became friends. Now here's a clip of some apple pie to finish off this video about Raspberry Pi. Bye!